Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to calibrate the AT260 SPT. That's a spiral plane of thickness there from Axminster. That sounds good. Stick around. Welcome to The Woodcrafter. I'm Andy Guile and our mission here on the channel is to inspire, educate and support you in your journey to becoming a better woodworker. We do that through a whole series of videos, tool tips, techniques, calibrations, how to, videos just like this one, and as well as projects that take you step by step through the journey of building something. So if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing now, give me a thumbs up, get involved by leaving a comment in the community and with that said, Let's get cracking. In the last few episodes, we've been looking at this beast, the AT260 SPT, the spiral plane thicknesser from Axminster. We've unboxed it, we've cleaned it all down, we've put it on its mobile base, and we've set it up. Today, we're going to look at calibrating this. Job one is to calibrate the digital gauge for the thicknesser. So we'll start by putting it into its thicknesser mode. Take off the fence, and just store that down the back of the way, raise the table, and move the dust collector into the thickness of mould. Now this digital gauge just behind the adjustment wheel here is pretty important. That's the thing that tells us the finished thickness of the stock inside the thicknesser. So if this is not reading correctly, obviously we have a problem. Now the instructions will tell you, go and choose a straight edge. This is my bench dog's fence and it's incredibly straight. The idea goes that you put the straight edge on the thickening bed of the machine and you raise that until the top comes in contact with the blades. Now I don't know about you, but I don't like the idea of taking a metal edge and raising that up into close proximity to a high speed carbon blade. This is aluminium and I can guarantee that that's going to damage this fence. Not only will I get a damaged fence, but obviously also it won't be accurate. So, I have a piece of oak here that I know is straight and parallel. And I can check that once again with the calibers. So the thickness of this piece of oak is 80.38, 80.38 and 80.37. So give or take a few thou, it's 80.4 thick consistently from this end to this end. So I'm going to use this as my straight edge. Just from the other side, I'm not sure if you can see, but this here is the spiral cutter. You've got this row of teeth here, and they're kickback teeth. So as the material comes through, it pushes the teeth forward, and then they lock into position, and that stops your material kicking back in use. And there's then a roller here that grabs the material and pushes it forward, and then you've got the spiral cutter block. Now I want to avoid these teeth here because they'll just stop me cutting the wood. So I'm moving the oak away from that and avoiding the first roller and just lining up the end of the oak with those teeth. And with that done, I'm going to raise this bed until the oak is just touching those teeth. And we're going to be somewhere down about here. I'm just reaching in and just rotating the spiral cutter, just so it engages. There, can you hear it? That's a cutter block, just engaging with the oak. Now we can just check the gauge, can you see? The gauge is reading 79.5. And we want this to read 79.3, and these small increments round about the eight. So just here, in front of the gauge, there's a small rubber cowl here. And you can't probably see it, but there's a hole just on the side of this. And what we want to do is to pull that forward and it exposes a small Allen key. In our kit, remember, we had two Allen keys, the big one we've used, and this is the smaller of the two. So come into here and just loosen off that Allen key. And now as you rotate that, you can see that my dial is moving. So we're going to set this to 80. 0.38, which is going to be about there. And then once we get to that, we can just tighten that up. 
And that's it, that's our gauge now calibrated. Job one, done. Just push the rubber cowl back on and we're good to go. Now the maximum cutting depth of this is 190 millimeters, dictated by the position of the table in relationship to the cutter we looked at before. And underneath here, if you can just see at the very bottom, there's an adjustable bolt. What we now need to do is to make sure that the maximum cutting depth of this is 190 millimeters and that's stopped by this bolt here. So we go back to the other end of the machine and wind our handle till we get 190 on the gauge and then we check that this is resting on this bolt. Going to be there, 190.0 millimeters. So now we need to look under the shelf at that bolt and see whether it's resting on here or not. There's no way you're going to be able to see it on the camera, but that's probably a good six or seven centimetres away from the base. So what I'm going to do is to release the lock nut on this and raise this till it's resting on the underside of the bench. So let's move the table out of the way so you can see what we're doing. And it's this bolt here I want to raise by quite a lot. So what I'm going to do the lock nut on this, get it out of the way. And then I'm going to release this so I can adjust it by hand. Okay. And now I'm going to lower the table back down so it touches this and slowly back this away until I get 190 on the other gauge. And I'm just going to raise that screw by hand until it touches the other side of the table, which is there. And then I'm going to bring the lock nut down into position and then raise the table and we lock it into place. And now I can just lock this into place here. Table down again, and it should stop moving down and be 190. 190. Good. That's done. On the side here, there's also an analog scale. Now we know that this is set to 190, so I now want to adjust the scale so 190 is just above the red pointer here. Actually, it's bang on. Now, I'm not going to use this scale. I'm always going to be using the digital scale, but it's always good to have things lined up, and that is already reading 190. If it wasn't, there's a screw here, and there's a screw here, and this is an elongated hole in the scale, so you unscrew that, then that scale can move up and down. That's already 190. I'm not going to use it anyway, but just so you know about it. So now we've got the digital scale set, we've got the analog scale set, and we've got the table here set at its limit of 190. I now want to put this back into its jointing mode and we'll look at these top tables. I now want to look at this table, the outfeed table, in relationship to the cutter block. Now the way that the jointer works is that the infeed table is lower than the outfeed and the top of the cutting blade is more or less in line with the outfeed table. So as you pass your material across the cutter, it's obviously taking out a cut of material here. And the freshly exposed face of your material, the bit you've just cut off and exposed, references on the outfeed table. So as you're making your cut, you're referencing on the outfeed face, not the infeed face, and that gives you that perfect cut. So, it's important the relationship of the outfeed table to the cutters. If the outfeed table is too high, you're going to push your material through and it's going to cut and then it will hit the outfeed table and your material will kick up and then you'll be going through your cut with the material in this direction and that's going to give you what's known as snipe here a piece of material and a step down as you then reference on the outside edge if your outfeed table is lower than the cutting edge of your blade then as the wood goes through the cut it will tip down and what you'll end up with is snipe at the back a piece missing out of the back of the wood and that's why sometimes when you hear people talking about these have got snipe it's because it's set up wrong and you'll end up with a snipe mark here if it's too high and a snipe mark here if it's too low now there's numerous ways of setting this up but a guy called Matt Eastley did a fantastic video or I thought it was a good video on his version the slightly larger one of this and he showed a very very quick and simple way of lining this up Take a piece of material that's flat and put it on the outfeed table. So you don't want the weight on the infeed table, on the outfeed table. And as you rotate the cutting edge towards you, the blade will pick up the material and it will move it. You see that? Now what he's saying is that movement from the starting point 
so the end point should be no more than 5mm. Taking a pencil, mark yourself a nice square line on the material. Line that line up with the edge of your outfeed table. Rotate the cutter until it moves and mark that position. And you want that gap between here and here to be 5mm. You can see that our gap here is nearer to 14mm. So that obviously that means there's too much cutter being exposed above this table when it rotates. So the table is actually lower than the cutter. So I want to raise this table. On the back of the table there's this handle here and this silver handle when rotated moves the position of this table in relationship to those cutting heads. Now this is actually factory set and this adjustment is not discussed in the manual but it's well worth taking the time to do this because it will improve the quality of your cut. There's a locking nut on here that's held in place by an allen screw. So to undo the allen screw, hold the knob in one hand and then just loosen off that locking nut and just back it out of the way. And now I can turn this handle to raise this table. So I'm going to raise that up a little bit. Just for now put the locking nut in place and I'm going to repeat that same test. So once again I've lined up my reference mark with the edge of my table and I'm going to rotate this. So we've moved it probably by about three millimeters which is not enough but it shows us we're going in the right direction. So now you can see it's better, probably could have been a little bit higher. Now once you get that moving as you would like, lock your locking nut down and lock your table back into position. Not sure if I mentioned it, before you adjust this, just loosen the table off with a handle at the side, otherwise you're going to distort the table. Tighten the lock nut back into place, nice and tight. Tighten the grub screw back down again. And then just recheck that to make sure nothing's moved. Yeah, and that's giving me the five millimeters I'm looking for. Good. What you then want to do is to check this in a different place. Now I'm looking whether this table is out of alignment with that blade. Line it up and rotate the, the cutter head. And look at that. Can you see how much that's moving? So that's showing me that this side of the table is actually lower than this side of the table. So I want to adjust this now to bring up this side of the table. So if you think about the outcome of that five millimeter test that we've just done, on one side of the table, our rope was moving five millimeters. On the other side of the table, it was moving considerably more. Now what that means is that our outfeed table is not level in relationship to the spiral cutter block. So what we've therefore got to do is to adjust the outfeed table so it becomes level in relationship to that spiral cutter block. Now what you don't want to do is to adjust the spiral cutter block. Now just think about that for one second. The spiral cutter block is factory set to be level and perfectly parallel with the bed on your thicknesser. Now if you come in and you adjust the spiral cutter, to be level with the outfeed table on your jointer, you will knock it out of alignment to your thicknesser and therefore you'll get rubbish results. So do not go in there and work out how to adjust a spiral cutter. There's no obvious adjustments anyway, but I'm pretty confident if you disassemble the machine, you'll find some adjustments somewhere, but don't do that. But what we are going to do is to level up that outfeed table so it's perfectly level with that spiral cutter block. Now this is a really important step. Now the reason this is so important is just think about it for one second. If I'm passing a wide board over my jointer and I know that my table is out of alignment to my blade, I will take more stock off one side than the other side. And then when I come and thickness my edge, the blade is still sloping in relationship to that edge that we've just made. So it will make it very hard to get a 90 degree cut. Then when I bring my wood into my thicknesser, Yes, the two faces will be coplanar, but they're now both out in relationship to that edge that we've done. And when I turn my wood on its end to go and thickness the other edge, I will now have a piece of wood that's not perfectly in 90 degrees. So even if I line my fence up to 90 degrees to my table, if my table's not level to my blade, I've got problems. Now, word of caution that this job is a pain in the arse. And it's going to take you a lot of fettling back and to back and to and adjustments to get it tuned in for where you need it to be. But it's worth doing, it's worth spending the time to get this table 
perfectly lined up with that cutter blade. Let me show you the technique. Now it's these two knobs here that raise and lower the table height. And you can see they rest on these parts here of the table. Now I want the table to come up on this side. Remember it was too low in relationship to the blade. So I'm not going to adjust the cutter block. I'm raising the table so I get consistent movement on either side when checked. And I do that by raising these two things here. So I'm just going to hold in place that bolt at the top there and just undo that locking nut at the bottom. And I'm trying not to move these out of alignment. So trying to watch where it goes. So looking at this flat edge here, I'm going to move this flat edge to that position there. And I'm going to move this flat edge to that position there. And then I'm just going to bring those down again, maintain that position and lock these nuts down. Now to go super tight at this point, but I'm trying to keep that same orientation that I had when we started we can see how we did. You see that's not catching there now on the blade at all. On this side, also not catching. So I'm now going to lower this table down again in relationship to the blades because it's no longer catching. Make sure my table's unlocked. And I'm going to lower this edge down until my blade catches. I lock this down, tighten up my locking nut, tighten down my bush. Oops. I'm getting that five millimeters of movement are wanted on that side, it's actually slightly less. That's good. And now I have to recheck this side again as well. And I'm looking for that same amount of movement on the table. Now here, I'm just catching but I'm not moving. Now that shows me I've gone too high on this side of the table. Oh yes. Now this is obscenely bang on. Bang on. Phew. So we've done it. So we've now got this table level. So I'm just going to come in and without moving these nuts, he says, I'm just going to clamp them down on this bottom one here. I don't want that moving. Now one of our community got in touch and said that they'd set their table up and every time they lock it down again, the table had moved. I can't, I don't know the model that they've got, but you can see the relationship. If these bolts move, or if this table is not locking down properly on this locking nut, then you're going to have problems. And the minutest of adjustments here was affecting the table. So I'd really check that this is locked down, this is locked down, and this is locked down. If these two move, it's going to tip the table like this. If this one moves at all, it's going to change how tightly the table locks down. What we're going to do. A final check. To make sure we just didn't change anything. And that's good. And that can take quite a while to get right, but it's well worth doing. And every time you make an adjustment here, you've obviously affected the adjustments that you've made down on these screws as well. So, take your time. Put a few hours aside for doing this, so I've now got this table here parallel to my cutter block. Now I can line everything else up from this table knowing we're in good shape. So that's it for today. The next episode we're going to calibrate the in-feed table, get that set up, get that co and get that all square, and then we're going to look at the fence and making sure that's working as well. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.